Hello everybody, I am Turit Mato and you are watching Art in Purulia. We have been discussing painting with acrylics in this series and this is the fourth video. So far we have covered the basics of materials, color concepts and making forms. If you haven't watched the earlier videos, it might be a good idea to go through them first. Today in this video, we will see in brief how to create illusion of space. That is how we can convincingly portray objects on a painting which look to exist far away or near to the observer. This topic of space will take me about two videos. This one primarily on linear perspective and the next one on atmospheric perspective. Before we get on to the illusion of space, let's see some basic mediums and additives that are used to enhance or modify some properties of acrylic paints and also to create textures. Acrylic paints are made by mixing the pigments with binder which is acrylic polymer and it also contains water as the carrier or vehicle which evaporates after application. While the paint is wet it is water soluble but once dry it becomes hard, water resistant and cannot be modified. The paint once out of the tube or jar starts drying and it dries fast which is quite uncomfortable to many since the working time with the paint is too short. The paints are available in gel, paste, fluid and extra fluid viscosities. A thick paint can be thinned down using water but excess of water will make the paints lose its property and make it lose its brightness and sign. To change the viscosity of the paints without affecting the acrylic properties, there are some mediums available. Here the medium is a generic term for the mediums, gels and pastes. Mediums are a bit watery and can be used to make a paint thinner. They come in glossy and matte variety. Gels are a bit honey-like and can be used to make paint thicker and generally mixed with fluid paints and pastes are thick and generally used to add to the volume. While all of them look whitish while wet, the mediums and gels dry transparent and the pastes dry white. It's important to keep in mind because when we add these to the paints, the paints look lighter because of the white color of the mediums. But the ones with the mediums and gels will get back their original color when dry while those with paste will remain same as it was wet. In any case, it's again to be noted that acrylic colors dry a bit darker than what it was when wet. Watercolor is opposite of this. Watercolor dries lighter. Besides the gels, mediums and pastes, you will find some additives like retarder or slow dying medium which claims to increase the drying time and flow improvers which makes the paint easy to spread. But please be careful, do not use them more than 10 to 15 percent of the paint or else they may alter the properties of the paint and they may become too sticky to apply. You will also find some gels and pastes for special effects like molding paste which is added to create textures, crackle paste to generate a cracked surface or glass bead gel to make rough sandy surface and so on. In fact, you can add anything to acrylic paint or mediums and use on the painting. They are excellent glue and that's why acrylic paints and mediums are preferred for mixed media collages and paintings. With the variety of mediums, gels and pastes available in the market, you are bound to get confused. So in the beginning, it's better not to go for uh, any fancy stuff, just go for a medium which is a bit fluid and uh, once you add to the paint generally if you're using a paint uh, which are available in tubes you can thin it down very nicely for application and it enhances the drying time also a bit there is also a variety of paints called open paints which are manufactured as slow drying that means you don't need to add any retarder or so but will dry slow on their own. 
but they are a bit expensive. Now let's come back to our illusion of space. I will enumerate few tricks that can easily put things away or near. Those will be size of objects, overlapping, placement of objects, higher or lower plane with respect to horizon, details on objects, value and color of the objects, linear perspective and atmospheric perspective. When there are similar objects on a frame, the smaller ones appear further than the bigger ones. When we overlap two objects, they may be of the same size, the one being overlapped appear further. When we see objects below the horizon, the objects on a higher plane appear further and above the horizon actually it's the other way around that is objects on the lower plane appear further. The objects those are far away will have almost no detail or very few details on them while those nearby will have clear and detailed structures. The value of the objects far off generally will be a bit lighter but not necessarily but it will be dull and a bit bluish in color and while those nearby will be brighter in color and in many times the value is slightly darker than what it is in the background. And the most convincing and effective concepts are linear and atmospheric perspective. While linear perspective is most essential for geometric shapes such as cityscapes, atmospheric perspective plays an important role in landscape painting. Let's see linear perspective in detail. Since we paint on 2D canvas, naturally whatever we paint on that would look flat. We have seen how we can use value to address this problem to some extent with individual objects. But what about a space where all the objects are at different heights and distances? Linear perspective is an excellent way to create space in a painting and it can be easily understood once you know these key elements. Eye level. You must know your eye level and refer everything with respect to it. It's also known as horizon line and in simple terms it's the height of your eye from the ground. The angle at which you are looking up, down, straight or tilted, it doesn't change with that. Of course, composition may change depending on the direction you are looking. The further an object is from the eye level, whether up or down, the steeper will be the angle and the closer ones will be more horizontal. Perspective type to be applied one point or two point, it's quite important to establish whether the view has one point or two point perspective. A very simple way to establish this is when you are looking at an object straight on, it has one point perspective. And if the object is tilted to your view and you see a corner of it, it has two point perspective. We will not bring in three point perspective here, it is an improvised form of two point only applied in case of very high or very deep structures. If you want to know how to draw objects in one, two or three point perspective, I have explained in detail in a video in the drawing for absolute beginners series, you can have a look at that. Next is vanishing points. Vanishing points are points where the objects appear to vanish. It is important to note that the vanishing point or points are always located on the eye level or horizon line, except the third dimensional vanishing point in case of three point perspective. At times the vanishing points in two point perspective may lie outside the picture frame also. Objects on the same plane or parallel will share the same vanishing points. Objects that are not parallel will have different vanishing points, but all refer to the same eye level. The lines joining the corners of the objects to the vanishing points are called vanishing lines. 
Most of us make mistake in two point linear perspective when looking an object from top or bottom. Let's see how a box would look from top or bottom. From the middle we can see only two sides. We cannot see the top or bottom. When looking from above we can see the top of the box as well and when from below the bottom of it. Drawing the sides is easy. Once we mark the height of the nearest corner, we connect the two ends to each vanishing point and then cut off the limits of the sides on the same line as that of the one in the horizontal plane. Problem occurs when we need to find the far away corner of the top or the bottom. Many times we just arbitrarily join ignoring the vanishing points and we land up in really bad perspective. Here the lines have to be joined to the opposite vanishing points to find the corner point. The left one will go to the right one and the right one will go to the left. Where the cut we got our far away corner of the top or the bottom plane. Next point is sighting. This is another important factor. Sighting is basically establishing the angle of the objects or any line which is appearing on the picture frame with respect to the baseline that is the horizon line. You can visually appreciate the angle and put it onto your canvas or place your canvas horizontally and simply align your pencil with the angular line an object is making with the horizon and bring it down to the canvas and you can mark the line. Another important factor is keeping the vertical lines vertical. All vertical lines like the vertical edges of walls, windows, doors or sides of boxes will remain vertical irrespective of the viewing angle. Now let's see how we can use these concepts in painting geometrical shapes such as architectural paintings. We will use a photographic reference. It is better to start with a photo reference than live outdoor painting. A photograph has already made our job of appreciating the values and shapes much simpler since it is already in two dimensions. I am thankful to Mr. Sankar Tutu Chatterjee, a friend of mine from our Chaurang art group of Purulia who is an excellent photographer and he has kindly consented to use this photograph of his for this video. The photograph is in two point perspective. We can see the lines go and vanish at a point or at different points but they all lie on the same plane. For painting this we need to sketch out the composition first. For some of the basic straight lines I will use a ruler but it is better to avoid a ruler while painting because too much of reliance on ruler will make it look too mechanical. Now that we have got our sketch, we will start blocking the basic light and dark values. We can see here there are multiple light sources and they are quite strong making the roof and some walls very bright and there are strong highlights and shadows. Though the walls are pink, at some places they appear white because of the strong highlights. The light makes impact on different planes in different angles 
and thus makes different values. We have to differentiate that while blocking in major planes. Once this uh, basic layer is dry, we will start defining the edges and values further. Flat brushes create great crisp straight lines and for such paintings they suit quite well. For convenience we can omit the figure and the flower vase in the beginning and if we feel it would be better to add at least one to create our focal point. But here our main focus is to get right on the linear perspective. However, getting the values correct is also extremely important. We should be able to differentiate between the planes and should be able to know which way the planes are facing. Once we are done with the main building architecture, we can add some objects, just a hint of them and then the flower vase also.
while doing the sighting again i realized i made a big mistake in the perspective of the door and the bottom line of the door was not matching with what was expected so i had to rectify that luckily you can paint over and over on an acrylic painting which definitely is not possible in watercolors so that's a big plus point in acrylics that's it friends for this video on linear perspective in the next video we'll see atmospheric perspective which is also referred as aerial perspective one important point here to note is that observation is the key you need to observe it properly place the horizon line in correct place see where the perspective lines go and meet and put all the figures as per that perspective once you get the perspective correct you will realize the painting has a much more realistic finish stay safe stay healthy see you